I kept fighting a drink, you know, on a daily basis. And somebody said to me, you know, I can always drink tomorrow. So I kind of lived on that kind of thing. It wasn't like I was getting away from it for the rest of my life. But I constantly fought a drink. I wanted to drink, but I didn't want to drink, you know. But there was no other changes. I never looked at the philosophy, just the program of Alcoholics and I never did a lot of these different things. So five years, I was just miserable, you know. And then I finally got back with my wife again, and we were back together. And uh, I guess I was about a year, two, almost two years dry. I guess just dry. I was still, you know, not a great guy. Uh, I just didn't drink. And then my wife took a stroke, and she was in the hospital for about six months, and she was completely paralyzed. And uh, you know, make a long story short, she passed away. Uh, you know, and. Uh, when she passed away, I started planning a drunk. I was going to get drunk to, when I left the cemetery, you know, after the funeral. My mother-in-law said to me, uh, you know, if you're going to drink, she says, go over and piss on the grave first. And uh, I really, you know, now I was planning a drunk. I was going to get a case of booze, come up to the mountains and the Catskills and, you know, drink my case of booze, and then maybe I come back into the program. So, but I didn't do that. I, you know, somehow or other, when she told me that, I went and I started to get some help. And then uh, my sponsor, my AA sponsor says to me, you know, he told me what an SOB I was. He told me that if he knew what he knew about me after he met me, he wouldn't have picked me up even. And uh, so he just asked me what happened and what changes I had made just by not drinking. And I had thought about this a couple of times, but I thought they never pertained to me. I listened to people you know, that had peace of mind and contentment and these happy, grateful alcoholics and, you know, they had kind of lost the will or the urge to drink and stuff. I was still fighting that urge. But I went home that night and I thought quite a bit about this peace of mind. I used to hear people talk about it. I didn't have the same fears that I had before when I stopped. Uh, I wasn't afraid to answer the telephone. Uh, I had a few dollars in the bank. Uh, I still was very uncomfortable around people. I still resented people that drank. Uh, I used to resent guys that went out and had a slip and they come back, nothing happened. I wasn't too happy about that, but if a guy went out and really got jammed up, I got a lot of consolation out of that. So, you know, just by looking at some of those things and just looking and see what happened without, you know, without doing any other changes. So I talk about my first five years of being, I went through all the problems and difficulties that most people have at that time, and I was very fortunate that I didn't drink. The one thing that had gone for me, I didn't pick up a drink. So finally, I started to look at this AA way of life that they talked about. I started looking at the 12 steps, and I said, you know, there has to be something more to this sobriety than what I'm getting, because I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not, you know, I'm still very tense. I'm still very angry about a lot of things. You know, I was still doing things I shouldn't be doing, and uh, <clears throat> so I started thinking about this, and then I started to, you know, listen and uh, get involved in the philosophy of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, and. Uh, I started to look at them. I started to realize what they were talking about as far as this AA way of life was concerned. And my life started to change. I started to be able to get involved in living. Uh, I started to be more sure of myself. I got some confidence back. I was able to take some risks. Uh, I was back in the trucking business and did a couple of different things. And some place along the line, I used to help a lot of guys. I, I went out on a lot of 12-step work. And I, I had a, she a shepherd, a German shepherd at home who was a great dog when I was around. When I wasn't around, he was a nasty dog. And I was living in Middletown at the time. So, uh, you know, he hurt a couple of people and I, you know, reached the point where I had to put him to sleep. So one Saturday morning, I realized I had to take the dog and I was putting him to sleep. So I put him to sleep and then I took a ride up on a throughway. And uh, I was praying for some direction with my life. I didn't know which way that was gonna go and I wound up uh, up in uh, or near Amsterdam, New York, and I was in a coffee shop having a cup of coffee, and I got to talk to this guy at the fountain. And I guess he looked and saw that I was troubled or something like that, but he asked me if I ever heard of Oriusville, this place of the North American martyrs. And uh, I told him I'd never heard about it. He said, well, it's only a few miles away. He said, you ought to go up there and just pay it a visit. I remember going up there, and I started to pray for some direction with my life. I said that, you know, if I could, if God had a plan for me, I, want, I don't know how that was going to happen, but I wanted to do more with my life than what I was doing. And after I was there, for, you know, after I left there, uh, about, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later, I got an opportunity to open up a place that had been closed down, you know, my first treatment center. I didn't know what I was doing. I was, you know, I used to be dealing with people 
that were sober in the program and people that were looking for help.